Okay, so that is now recording. Um, so welcome again, everyone. Um, now that we've kind of done the housekeeping, uh, we'll move on to the meat of the agenda, which is the Ward Highways budget. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a quick explanation of what this budget is. Um, and then I'll kind of ex kind of go through what ideas have been chucked in at me from residents um, that people would like to spend the money on or spend whatever money there is on, which is kind of highways related. Um, and then once I've done that, I'll then open it up for any questions and clarifications and, and people want to suggest anything else or, or want to comment or have any thoughts on the ideas that are there. Um, and then we'll kind of have a bit of a discussion about the ideas that are there. Um, and then either we'll make a decision tonight what we're going to, which project we're going to go for, or projects we're going to go for. Or if we feel there's not enough of us, then I will put it out in my next newsletter with a kind of voting slip saying, you know, pick your top 10, your top, you know, um, or you know, rank these ones top one to 10 and, and, and let me know which ones you want to want to fund. So that's kind of how we're gonna how we're gonna kind of play it. Um so just to um explain what the kind of Ward Highways budget is and what it isn't. Um so it's as the name suggests, it's to spend on um highways projects and the way it's divvied up is there's ten thousand pounds um per councillor so so um it's not ten thousand pounds per ward because some wards have two councillors um are double the size of ours and so forth they get twenty thousand uh, as we're a single councillor ward we only get ten thousand um so obviously it's roughly by population um for that ten thousand uh, it might sound like a lot of money but in many ways, it, it's it's peanuts in 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 kind of council terms, and in, in certainly for things that are kind of highways related, it's not a lot. It doesn't buy very much, and I'll kind of go through when you see the projects that have been suggested and the costings next to them, you kind of see what I, I mean with that. Um, it we're not talking big projects. This is not going to fund a new crossing or a new roundabout or you know a new road or anything like that um so just to kind of manage those expectations to start with this is small projects really um a, a little you know a bench here or a, you know a bollard there or a double height curbing over there that sort of thing um at a stretch you can get some double yellow lines out of it and that's about as as, as much as you you can get um and the double yellow lines would pretty much wipe out the budget for the year because um uh, you'd think a pot of paint is not that expensive, but the pot of paint isn't the, the problem. The problem is the legal and kind of um, formal consultation. The council's got a legal process, and including the formal council, um, consultation the council's got to do for those double yellow lands to have legal weight, hence why they're so expensive. Um, so um, the other thing that the Ward Highways budget is not, is it is not for repairs and maintenance it is for new stuff um so when somebody says oh can we get that pothole fixed frankly that should be being done anyway um by the council's repairs contractor um it's not a you know a, a kind of you know or you know way of getting something resurfaced or repaired or fixed that should otherwise be done as part of the wider roads program this is for kind of extra nice things that we think would be really helpful or nice or would solve a particular problem um it, it's supposed to be additional uh and that's often also another reason why you don't get much because it's also taking into account the ongoing maintenance cost in the future as well so that's that's why um it, you know, you know, you know, it doesn't look like you get a lot for your money. Um, so yeah, that's roughly what the the highways budget is. Um, and the other thing, as the name would suggest, um, is that it's got to be spent on highways stuff. Um, and that might sound obvious, but um, there are certain scenarios where you think it might be highways, or it it could be spent on it and actually we we can't because it's actually turns out this particular path or verge or bit of grass 
it's not highways, it's housing or it's parks or, or whatever else. So it's it's specifically stuff that is out on a road, on a verge that is part of the road or pavement or path. Um, and there's a few instances where I've had ideas in that actually, where I thought, oh, we could potentially progress this. And I found that um, the bit that we're trying to protect is, is housing land. And so we can't use the highways budget, on it, which is really frustrating. Um, so there's a, there's two ideas I've had this year, which have one is for some sort of protection on Broadmeadow Lane. Um, sorry, no, Monohall Hall Road near the junction of Broadmeadow Lane, for example. And although the pavement is highways, the verge next to it, which is what we want to protect, is housing. It's not part of the highway. And so highways went, no. Um, and the same, again, there's another one on, on Manningford Road, which is similar, where there's a, a highways path, but it's next to a massive bit of green, you know, green grass, which gets getting driven on by that green grass is um it's quite a you know, big patch is again it's housing land it's not it's not part of the highway so that's the other the other thing to bear in mind that it's got to be on stuff that is highways hence why it's these suggestions that have kind of got through that filtering process that I'll, I'll show you in a minute um the other thing to just uh yeah just to kind of explain is that um yeah as i said it's ten thousand pounds per single member award or £20,000 per double member award. Um, it, it's about one of the few things that councillors have a kind of direct control over in their wards. Uh, it's about the, the one of the few little bits of ward budget we have. Um, obviously, in terms of money hall, being the councillor I am, I prefer to kind of pass that decision on so you guys have a say, hence why we're having this meeting. Um, so it's not just me kind of going, yeah, all right, I'll spend on that. Um, so I kind of try and involve residents in the process and and as much as possible get give residents the final say really um so hence last year we funded some double yellows on Bramwood crescent that was what topped the vote when i did the voting slip in my newsletter uh last year um the year before we had a meeting uh, about 20 or 30 people and the decision of that meeting was to spend it on lots of little projects so we did a bench and we did um some bollards and a few other bits and bobs around the ward and again that was residents deciding that so that's what I, I kind of try and do. I try and yeah, give it to kind of you guys to um, give it a steer or, or kind of you know even make that kind of decision. Um, so that's I think the long and the short of it in terms of the highways um, budget. Is there any questions about that bit specifically before I kind of move on to the project ideas we've had in? Any any questions there? Or is that fairly fairly clear? Can um, I just ask? Sorry. Where, where have the project ideas originated from? Um, so from residents. So so um, it'll be, you know, when residents ask for, oh, could we have a bollard here to protect this? Or this verge keeps getting driven over. Is there anything we can do about that? Or, um, uh, oh, the, the parking around here is terrible. Can we have WL lines? You know, that sort of thing. Okay, so um, it's an amalgamation of residents sort of queries. Yeah, to a certain, yeah, and it's the ones where they've specifically requested for, can you put in something to deal with this thing? Gotcha. And my response has often been, well, I'll put it on the list of highway budget ideas, no promises, because we've only got £10,000 and it's up to residents, you know, to, to kind of decide like, collectively. So, so yeah, that, that's how it is. Um, I, I mean, I, 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 in my last newsletter, I said, we're having the meeting to decide, you know, the project ideas this year. Um, I, I didn't explicitly ask for suggestions because I already had a few, but obviously some people would have chucked in some in response to that anyway. In previous years, when maybe I didn't have enough suggestions throughout the year, I've explicitly actually asked for people to chuck in their ideas um, in response to this budget. But so it, it, it'll either be specifically in response to me saying, we've got 10 grand, what do we spend it on? Or it's an accumulation of people going, we've got this particular problem, can we install this or paint that or drop this curb or whatever? So that, that's that's generally um, kind of, so I kind of tend to log those as much as I can and then yeah. when next is money comes in, put it on the list. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, I will attempt to share my screen um, again.
Right. So this first slide, and thank you for Melissa for like put, put, putting this, the, these together. But this first slide is ideas that we had for kind of last year's budget that we couldn't fund because we only had 10,000. So this is kind of the, the left over ideas I kept on the list from last year. Um, so these are, um, yeah, those for it, basically. So um, and I'm, I'm going to I'll go through them all verbally and then I'll kind of quickly show you a, a Google Street view of each of them as well. Um, so uh, the first is double yellow lines at the junction of Meadfoot Avenue and Ulster Road South. Um, so this is, for those who don't know, it's the kind of the, the, the small parade of shops um, where the, the kind of dominoes is um, and various other things. Um, just off the Ulster Road South, you've got that kind of service kind of road and, and, and the shops and then it kind of leaves into Meadfoot Avenue, which then turns into the lollipop of Marsham Road. Um, and yeah, the issue is often people kind of parking on the bends uh, of both the service road and the uh, kind of road junction into Marsham Road uh, and no, into Ulster Road South. Um, so yeah, there was a request for Double Yellows um, uh, for, to try and resolve that. Um, there was a request for kind of double height curbing on 2 to 8 Brockworth Road, um, which is actually Bells Lane, um, this patch. Uh, on, on Bells Lane where the, the setback houses are uh, brought with road and there's a lot of kind of deliveries that kind of seem to use the footpaths that churn up the, the verge. Um, so more do we have lines at the junction of Linsworth Approach and Linsworth Road um, and also Midhurst Road and Linsworth Road. Um, people also have some bollards next to the left filter lane at Monaco Hall Road junction with Brunswick Crescent. Um, and then there were various small projects which I kind of lumped together, um, which included kind of a, a drop curb on Norton Close, and that was to kind of um, make it easy, I think, for people to kind of cycle or uh, into the, the the path that then leads down into kind of Druid's Heath and Penny Acre. Um, and also various no parking grass verge sort of signs. Um, so that was last year's that we didn't didn't win effectively um and then the ideas i've had this in are uh, this year are some double height curbing reduction of the verge around 269 broad lanes this particular resident who um had a particular problem with a, a bit of verge outside her house that was getting driven over by um bin lorries particularly um i had a few complaints about the um, junction of post and croft and Broad Lane, um, and the verge there, and um, could we could they have some height curbing? Um, road sign to identify seven three four seven five two Ulster Road South, um, which is a set of houses um, basically just off kind of Millpool Gardens, where it's actually they're they're kind of if unless you know where they're that they are, they're kind of hard to find. So the residents are asking, well, can we have a sign just to just direct delivery drivers so they know where where we are where we are when they find it when they get here. Um, digital speed warning sign on Bells Lane. There is already what a couple up by Baverstock or where Baverstock was, um, but uh, somebody was asking for another one. Um, another request was a path from 50 Monihaw Hall Road to the kind of nearest bit of road pavement. Um, and again, I'll show you that, but there's quite a large verge gap where you kind of have to go a bit around to kind of get to the verge. And in terms of people like, again, delivering or dropping off stuff. Um, or, or be able to get to the door easily. Uh, there was um, a request for a footpath there. Um, again, more double height curbing on Linsworth Road and also on Colleen Avenue. So those were the, the ideas that have been chucked in this year. Um, there were a few others that, again, I, as I said, have been discounted because of um, basically, yeah, Highway said no, not our land, so we can't, we can't use this budget on here. Um, so those are the, as I said, the ideas we've had. Uh, I'll just show you what they look, these look like in the real world. Um, so this, um, on second, I'll show my screen again. Right, so this is the junction of Meadford Avenue and um, Austro Road South. Um, so the proposal would be for kind of the double yellows right around this junction and into the service road and also um, around that junction there, so where that car's parked outside um, the chippy there. 
Um, so yeah, though both those curves um, to kind of double yellow line all that. So that was that first proposal. Um, this is the bit of Bell's Lane Brockworth Road that I was talking about in terms of trying to double curb, double height curb around here and around here, this path here, because um, you can see that path at the top um, also gets driven on. So it, it was kind of, you're double curbing all of this, this patch of land here. Um, this is the junction of, mid of Linsworth Approach and Linsworth Road. So again, the proposal was for double yellows around this corner here, um, and also the opposite one as well, uh, to kind of double yellow that junction between Linsworth Road and uh, Linsworth Approach. Um, there's quite a lot of parked cars there a lot of the time. Um, and obviously the row of shops, which is just to the left here. In fact, I'll, I'll probably kind of show you. Oop, no. um, so yeah. Um, yeah, so there's the shops here, um, obviously, which is quite a lot of parking there, which is a bit problematic, but um, sometimes that then spills over into this junction, um, which has gone to the residents, um, you know, people are trying to speed through as well, because it is, is used as a bit of a rat run um, to avoid the island at the top of Parsons Hill. Um, so all of that combined can make it a bit, a bit tricky around there. Um, so that was the next suggestion. And then this is the junction of Midhurst and Linsworth. Um, again, idea was for double yellows here, which is the other end of Midhurst and Linsworth. Uh, so this is my whole road where people are asking for um, the kind of bollards in the filter lane. So if you see where this car is here, they're often, this particular car on this occasion, I don't think is parked there, but often where that car is roughly, people park in that filter lane quite a lot. Um, and so the proposal is to try and do something to stop them doing that, um, to stop that filter lane in parking. So one idea was bollarding, chunk of it, um, kind of bollards on the curb effectively to try and stop that, um, or trying to double yellow, yellow it. Um, so obviously I've written bollard or on the, on the slide, but it, you know the other the other option was 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 double yellow. So, but yeah, it was a measure of some description to try and stop that parking in that filter lane um, at the Molly Hall Hall Road, um, Bramwood Crescent Junction. Um, and then this was Norton Close. This was a drop curb, um, which, I, as I said, I put together with a load of other little little ideas. Um, I mean, we could group that in with the the Ulster Road South sign idea as well. Um, that's again, that's like smaller cost. Um, this was this bit of Broad Lane um, that the resident here wanted um, curbing off. As you can see, this bit of verge here has no kind of curb on it, um, and so it just gets driven over by lorries. So it was, the idea was to kind of reduce it and um, kind of double curb around the remaining bit. Um, this is Post and Croft, so I had, a, as I said, a, again, I've had a couple of complaints about this. This is the verge here on both sides that um, people were um, asking for, for some sort of protection measures. Again, we're probably talking double height curbing. Council highways engineers generally favour double height curbing when it comes to verge protection. Um, and yeah, so this is... Um, again, I'll start, with, I'll start with south, and these are the houses that are kind of set back, as you can see. Um, kind of hard to see where they are. Um, there is no direct road access there, and the kind of nearest road access is there, if you see, um, which is Millpool Gardens. So, you know, anybody who's kind of doing deliveries or trying to get there needs to kind of park at Millpool Gardens, and they can't always find where houses are, they kind of miss it. So, um, the resident was asking for a kind of a sign, basically. You see those bollards are saying, you know, 734 to 75 to Australia South this way. Um, and this is kind of Bell's Lane where potentially we were um, thinking of a of a speed activated sign. Um, and we're back here again um, for my Hall Hall Road. And this again will be roughly the location of the footpath that people were talking about um, across the verge. As you can see, there isn't really a crossing point across this verge. Um, to get from the pavement to uh, that 
kind of walk away in front of people's front doors. The next nearest one's up here, um, quite a way up actually. So that that was the well, there's a kind of a bit of a path here, but um, yeah. So there's a bit more trying to get create a bit more access there. Um, and yeah, this is outside one six one Lindsworth Road, where people are asking for verge protection for this section. Um, and Colleen Avenue again, people are asking for verge protection here as well, which would have meant, which would again most likely mean double double height curbing. So those are the projects that I had requests for. Um, so that's what we've got to kind of consider. Um, yeah. So, so before we go any further, any any questions? Alan. I've got lots of comments, but just a question at this point. Have you done some kind of pin in the map analysis? Because we have sort of distinct estates within your ward. Is there a particular area that hasn't really benefited from this fund hitherto in the last few years? Um, I think they've all had bits. Um, so yeah, because because the the second the very first year, um, I finished off some double height curbing on Monument Hall Road um, on the the side that we were allowed to double height curb outside Broadmeadow School. Um, so that was that that was the bit that got it in the first the first year. The second year, we kind of did bits everywhere. So there was some drop curbs in Froxton Close in. The top end of Druid's Heath. There were some railings in Druid's Heath, just railings that were put in on Mannington Road. There was a bench that was put in on Broad Lane, um, the one at the junction of Dresden Croft. Um, but that year, it was kind of like put little bits everywhere. Um, and then last year, it was we blew it all on Bramwood Crescent, double yellows. Um, so, in terms of where has had the big chunks of money. I suppose you could say Monohall Hall Road, the far end of Monohall Hall Road has had, although that first year, bear in mind, um, in fact, no, both the first years of when I was the councillor, it was only six and a half thousand. So it's only this year and last year when it's been 10. So they had, that had six and a half thousand on it. The second year, there was, as I said, six and a half thousand just done bits everywhere. So everybody got, well, a lot of bits of the wall got a bit. And then last year, the, the 10 grand went on, on Bramwood Crescent. Um, and I've had no ideas actually from this the Bramwood Crescent estate this year. So nobody's nobody's from 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 the Money Hall New Money Hall estate. I've had I've not had anything this year from them um, actually. Uh, so obviously there are there are a few ideas from Money Hall Road, which is just around the corner. Um, but I haven't had anything from that estate this time. Um, so I suppose is there anywhere that's not had anything um no certainly some will have had more than others so i mean i think on this probably drew these had little bits but not tons um martian road we obviously meet for avenue junction um that you know that area there which is on you know just just north of drew and um, you know that's never had anything um so for, you know those double yellows um so yeah uh but um yeah, so that's roughly kind of what's been spent previously, if that answers your question. It does, thank you. And then are you opening up for comments, discussion? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Any, 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 and just 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 to say on this, you know, this is all the requests pretty much unfiltered, other than being filtered for are we allowed to actually do it in terms of of, of is the is the budget big enough and is it highways land? So I haven't really done any kind of, yeah, I think this is great or not. Um, I can tell you which ones I think have had probably most complaints and most people being excised about it. Um, but I haven't um, filtered for that in, in this, as it were, if that makes sense. Uh, so this is literally just everything I've got on the list. Um, so yeah, uh, just a kind of, it comes with that, that health warning. Um, Okay, the TV's just paused, so I'll be back in one second, just as I was about to unleash. Hang on a sec.
Melissa, did you have any questions or thoughts briefly? Um, not really questions, no. I mean, I have thoughts about what I prefer, but yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I quite like the double yellows at the top of my road. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought you might have a vested interest there, interest yeah. there, uh, there Melissa. Um, yes. It so, is uh, interest, so that's all I'll say on I that. Mean that. I mean, that idea, it has to be said, that idea came second last year. So in terms of voting last year, that, that came second to the Bramble Crescent yet double yellows. Um, so, so yeah, it it, um, it it came to the final round of voting because I did a single transfer vote, and it was yeah, I had to, I had to had to count all and count all the, the transfer preferences and, and all this sort of stuff. And yeah, it, it came second in, in the end to Bramble Crescent. Um, go on, Alan. Thank you. So I think that's that's a really really good list, and you presented it really well. I love these double side uh, curbs. I hate to see grass verge being being destroyed um so I'm, I'm a big advocate of those what i would say is that the the parking it's just been a recent thing at the money hall road junction that's problematic for all of us so if you went if you went with that particular option the benefits are quite wide ranging that would certainly benefit myself uh, as a resident and, and many, many others that use that, that junction as well. It is becoming a bit of a pain. Um, so that would certainly get my vote and I would imagine be quite popular. Okay, that's that's useful. So while you're out, Melissa very much stuck her oar in, unsurprisingly, for um, the Made for Avenue, uh, Ulster Road South, uh, Double Yellows Junction, because uh, full disclosure, Melissa lives on Martian Road, so that, that would... That would um, that makes sense. Um, and I was just saying when you came back in, that idea, the the those the others came second last time. They just did, they ended up missing out to the Bramwell Crescent. Um, okay. Um, are there any we think that are a bit spurious, or we, we wouldn't want to, or you think, mm, or is, are they all? Do you think they're all fairly? You know, they're all a good shout. Well, some are quite specific, aren't they? Um, and some have a lot more generic benefit yeah i'd agree with that there's some that go to like one house or like just a group of houses and it's like would that actually help like a large part of the ward or will it just help like some people I don't know. yeah they're probably not very popular anyway though so yeah i live on poston croft i should whisper this very quietly but we kind of sorted out our grass verge problems um, amongst us. So some, someone has taken, taken it upon themselves to produce a sign and fingers crossed, or a couple of signs, it seems to have had the desired effect. Ah, okay, that's interesting. So if I, in, in a few months time, I get Boston Croft residents going- Don't mention my name. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, that's interesting because yeah, I, I mean, so so there are, there are there are some of these on this list. Um, I've had um, kind of several complaints about, um, and others it's it's a one off. So Boston Croft would would definitely I, I definitely have at least two or three people about that. Um, with um, me for Avenue, there was there was definitely three or four last year um, who, who were chucking that one in. Um, and also me for Avenue was, was last year when I was uh, both logging things as they came over the year, but also specifically said, give me your ideas, um, which I was less explicitly done this year because we already had so many. Um, that, that was one of the ones that was coming in anyway, without me even having to prompt it. Um, uh, and yeah. Um, the filter lane one again. That, that that's come up a few times. Um, the Monival Hall Road filter lane issue. Um, so yeah, I've I've had that one quite a lot. Um, the but yeah, the the kind of the the, the you know Colleen Avenue or the Linsworth Road verge stuff. I've had yeah, that, that's been like one person probably. I think from from memory. Um, and yeah, like Melissa says, you can kind of tell like. To a certain extent, the, the ones which are like, oh, the verge outside my house keeps getting, you know, driven over rather than 
the verge, which is our entire street gets being driven over, is, is a yeah, slightly different um, uh, kind of scope. Um, okay, so bearing in mind the, um, I suppose, cost really, that's the next thing, because um, So, um, now, yeah, I suppose if we go for the WL Alliance and make Melissa happy, that will, that will be the entire budget. Um, uh, so that, that's, that's the thing to bear in mind. So the question there is, do we want to try and do multiple things? And therefore, that's probably, you know, a couple of bits of double curbing here and there. Or do we try and, um, you know, uh, just do one big thing? Um, so that that's the other the other kind of thing to consider, really, because um, you could probably do, um, you know, yeah. The, for example, I know you said you solve the Poston Croft problem, but if you if you you know we were doing the Poston Croft, we'd also be able to afford to do uh, the the new path to Fifty Monohall uh, Hall Road, for example. Um, so, yeah. Um, are there any thoughts around that about whether we should try and do lots of different ones and therefore go for some of the cheaper ones or not. Melissa, do you want to go first? I mean, like, I, I don't think I should really put my point of view into the ring too much because, again, I, I do have my rather biased <laughs> need for avenue double curbing. So, I don't know. I mean, I think we should, I mean, I don't, I don't really know. Like, it it is kind of useful to do numerous things, but I, I don't really, yeah, yeah. I just think in terms of numbers of beneficiaries, the, the, the smaller projects, they're not really cutting it. I'm wondering whether it's, it's worth maybe doing a short list of high profile proposals, because obviously, you know, there's the, there's not 30 people in this meeting. I, I don't feel that we have a legitimate right tonight, maybe to call it, but maybe if, if you shortlist some high profile proposals that are going to benefit multiple users and then put it to the vote. Yeah, I think that's probably a good call, actually. So, OK, so if we if we effectively criteria it by, you know, um, how, you know, roughly, is it going to be a more wide reaching you know, benefit to people? um then then we can yeah probably like you say knock someone on the head and make it a bit easier to you know for people to, to vote them through i mean the consequence of that i think will be it'll be the more expensive ones that go forward just because it, it's tending to be the more expensive ones i think will probably have the slightly wider benefit um which means we will only be able to do one or possibly two of them depending on which they are. um but if you were to divide the value with the number of people that, that benefit, you're going to get a bigger bang for your buck. If you sort out the grass verge, even though I believe it's it's kind of been sorted out, and we'll let down the tyres on anyone that, that parks on it in future. But if you were to, just for argument's sake, if you were to sort that out, that's 30 people, 30 households. You're not you're not going to, no one else comes down Poston Croft. We don't see anyone else. Um, so you're not getting a big bang for your buck, I don't think. Yeah, whereas I'm not really going to gonna let anyone's ties down, by the way. Um, uh, you have letters. Uh, just, just, um, yeah. Whereas to take, you know, again to take Melissa's example of of the Mead for Avenue, that patch is, you know, it's it's the entrance for about two hundred and fifty, yeah, yeah. you know, three hundred yeah. households, and you've got, you know, obviously other people using it in terms of the shops and all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, as not to mention people driving past the main road. Absolutely. So, um, so yeah, no, yeah. When you kind of compare those differences, yeah, and no, I, I definitely take your point. So, in that case, let's let's um, I'll do something down. Um, the uh, Mead for Avenue uh, also itself, as we've just said, I think we're, we've come to the conclusion that should be on the shortlist based on the conversation we just had. Um. Uh, double height curving around version two to eight profit of road. So we'll, I'll just show you what that is again. Um, mm, mm. 
Um, the other thing I just want to check on that one actually is I may be getting a, I may get a nasty shock uh, about whether it's highways or housing actually because this is one I should have checked and um, bear with me I'm just double checking that 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 bit of grass that I was talking about isn't actually housing. Because if it is, I'll get the same response from, from highways I had for the other two. Oh no, that one's fine. Yeah, that is that is a highways verge. That's fine. Right. So we can keep that on the list. Um, if we want to, that is. Uh, so I'll just go back and show my screen again. So this was this bit. Um uh this 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 large bit, two large bits of verge in front of these houses, which as I said are are Brockworth Road address, they face out onto Bell's Lane. Um so do we want to keep that on the list or, or not? Alan, you're muted. So yeah, two things. One is, so I, I do have every sympathy because like I say, I hate to see grass verges invaded. But again, if you if you apply the number of beneficiaries calculation, this, this is going to score poorly. The other thing to say is I've seen some really, really good work done this summer in other areas around planting wildflowers to protect grass verges. So I just wonder if actually we could be a bit more three-dimensional about this um, going forward as a, as a solution. Okay, so we think we think take this one off is, is, the, is what I'm hearing from Alan. Melissa, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I'm in agreement, but I do quite like Alan's sort of creative solutions idea. And I think that could be like, award like activity you could sort of, sort of organize julian maybe yeah, yeah 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 no i think um i have asked the question before from highways about this and i generally get the official response of oh public liability and oh you can't plant things because of utilities below and, and these sorts of responses so i think i need to have a conversation with whoever alan's had a conversation with um to try and see and kind of how we just get around that sort of um, efficiencyness, if that if that makes sense, or, or, or it might just be a case of of, of um, asking for forgiveness rather than permission. Um, although obviously I didn't say that. <laughs> so Solly Hall have done it, and if a Tory if a Tory borough can do it, then come on, I'm sure we can. Yeah, there is as it happens, and um, there is a. Birmingham wide campaign kind of uh, B campaign at the moment and, and one of the people running it lives in the ward actually not far from you Melissa in in um, Millpool Gardens um, so and, and one of the things that they're, they're pushing for is a bit more like interesting creative kind of verge growing and all that sort of stuff as well as cutting you know use of pesticides so um, yeah there may be stuff we can we can do linking in with them as well okay so we'll we'll, we'll I think the, the concession from you two is, you guys is to will take the Brockworth one off the list. Um, so uh, next um, is the um, is the Linsworth approach, Linsworth Road Junction, double yellows. Um, so again, I'll just remind you what that looks like. Um, that is here. Um, I think they've got a very convincing argument, Julian, having um, parked around there for the shops. I have every sympathy. Okay, shall yeah. we keep that one on? 
definitely because i think the shops around there so it is quite a widely used area and yes, not yes. just by the people yep. who live Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it, I think the request originally was from kind of what you see where that wheelie bin is in, in the picture. I think it's kind of from there on kind of both sides round the corners. Um, I think that's kind of what they were talking about. So you, you wouldn't double yellow the bit immediately bit outside the shops, but you would further back when it kind of turns into the, the rest of the estate. Um, okay, we'll keep that on. Uh, so the next one was... Uh, basically, the other end of Midhurst and Ninsworth, uh, which is WL is here. At least I think this was the request. Sometimes some, when you get these in, it's not always clear what they mean. I mean, where we were before on the other picture was, again, the junction of Ninsworth and uh, Midhurst. So it, it could well be that they meant the same location, in which case we can forget this one. But, um, yeah, I don't know what you guys think here. I mean, yeah, if it's the same area, then they'll have the same sort of football. So I'm, I'd be happy to put that forward. Yeah, so I think that there is a, there is a problem here um, with people parking on the bend. I have seen that for myself. So yeah, I think this is, this is a legitimate proposal. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it on then. Um, that's fine. Uh, and then the next one is, uh, yeah, so this is the, the filter lane issue. Um, uh, yeah, Alan's definitely favor that one, and, and Melissa as well. So, so okay, we're keeping the, we're keeping the filter lane in. Um, next. Uh, right, so this is Norton Close um, drop curb plus very other small bits and obviously the advantage of the small projects um is you can kind of dot them around the wall a bit like we did in year two um and so do a bit here and a bit there and it just you know it, it, it it's that's it 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 needs everybody feels like they get a bit um so that that's the i mean we might end up being able to do this depending which of the other ones we found we might be able to do this kind of as well but i don't know if we'll we'll be able to kind of if, if it's double yellows it probably won't be um but yeah, so any any thoughts on this one? Sorry, remind me what they want here. So they, th this one, they want a drop curb, and I think it was here. Okay. Where and you see that path that goes into yeah, the yeah. basically you. So I've I cycle through this way sometimes myself, and the nearest drop curb is is at the top of Norton Close. So you end up having to pavement cycle all the way down to here, or you have to mount the curb. Here, not that I am in in any way saying well, so we should go here and having any 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 view on this, but I can see, and my point is, I can kind of see the point, um, because it would mean it would allow you easy access onto that path, which then leads into um, the, the kind of basically it's the link path between the New Mine Hill Estate and kind of Penny Acre and, um, across the the Chimbrook. Um, so yeah, that was and it's it's a, it's. It was, yeah, it's a relatively low cost one. And so I bunged it in with, as I said, a few requests for no parking and grass for those signs and, uh, you know, those little tiny bits of, of um, funding. Sounds good to me. Yeah, so we could, I mean, we could chuck the Ulster Road South um, uh, house name, house sign in, in on this as well, because then again, that was only 800. So I could chuck that in, in, in this package, as it were. Um, right, so this was the 269 Broad Lane trying to cut this bit of verge down and putting some curbing, potentially double height curbing um, around it. The, just, just for information, as you can see, if you look down the service road, it's not the only patch like this um, that doesn't have any kind of curbing around. The particularly egregious thing here was that if you look, there's a, there's, um, there's a grid a man good right in the middle of the grass, which is a bit of a strange one, um, which again was, was why the particular resident was was a bit frustrated because it was like, well, that's pointless, isn't it? Um, so, yeah. Um, that service road as a whole is a bit of a, tr of a, um, a tricky one. So I, I, I refer, refer you to the similar answer, really. 
I'd, I'd love to do something with, with the grass verges to stop this happening, but I, I think it might be some other project. Yeah, you said there were other like places on the road that also had similar issues with the grass verge. So is it fair to fix like one person's verge and not like everyone else's? <laughs> Well, I mean, I've just zoomed further down uh, the service road. So there are other bits where it's um, kind of similar. Uh, and I, I don't, I mean, as in it's similar as in it's unprotected. It's, it's these verges that are flush for the road and therefore get easily driven on. I don't know if um, this might be the only one that has that problem for, for whatever reason, the other bits don't get hit because the road, the service road is slightly wider than that. Or, or whatever, I don't know. I suspect not. I suspect they all probably get driven over, to, you know, by, by the bin lorries. But yeah, so this is the one I had. The, you know, these are the ones I had the, the complaint about. But yeah, um, okay. I'm I'm taking that as a no off the short list, basically. I think from from what you two have said. Um, and then the next one. Ah, there we go. Alan's uh, neck of the woods. Any thoughts on this one? So it, it used to absolutely annoy the hell out of me. I never, I wasn't one of the ones that complained, but I totally get the complaints. But obviously I am touching wood. I only think it was one or two perpetrators and I think the signs have done the trick. I know that may come back to bite me, Julian, at the time of writing, here and now, it's, right. it's now, not I, I also problem. refer you to Kay's earlier point about this meeting is recorded. Um, <laughs> um, so, okay, so I think, I think, okay, let's, let's, if, if you think, and I will, I will you know, go with what a resident thinks, it has for now sorted the problem, then we'll, um, we'll, go with that unless Melissa vehemently disagrees. I mean we can always touch on it next year and have it as an in the running next year if it doesn't work out with the signs. So. Yes but obviously that depends on who your councillor is next year um, <laughs> that they may decide to, to, to spend all the money uh, without consulting you um, but obviously that's a, a discussion for another day. Um, I very much hope I am still your councillor next year but I would I would uh, I'm not complacent therefore uh, yeah, there's no guarantees. Um, right, so um, this is the road sign, Ulster Road South. Um, uh, so yeah, this is like a quite cheap one, it was 800 pounds. So this would be kind of a road sign here that says 734752, Ulster Road South, this way. And to, to kind of help people trying to find those addresses, find those addresses. Yeah, if you could lock it in with something else, then I think, I mean, it's worth it, isn't it? It's fine. Good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll we'll um we'll we'll shut that in with the tiny the, yeah the, the small projects. Um, right. Bell's Lane uh, speed sign. So um, yeah, this was something that came in from a resident saying you know can do can you have any thirty miles an hour speed signs or something else. And I said well we can't put thirty miles an hour speed signs up because you don't. You know in residential areas generally but we could do maybe a um a, you know automatic speed activated one there is already two outside kind of where bubble stop was um on each side of the road um, the speed activated ones but not further down um so yeah and i haven't necessarily got a precise location in mind for it um so we, we'd kind of have to probably do that in consultation with residents and i'd probably say well right you know residents have decided to spend it on a vehicle activation sign on Bell's Lane, where that's exactly where you want to put it, um, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it's probably only been one person who actually put that request in. Um, having said that, though, Bell's Lane is a pretty fast road, um, you know, right through a residential estate. So um, I think in terms of the benefit, I don't know. What do you think, Alan? Um, is there any bits that... Uh... I'm just trying to think of the, the layout. Are there any bits near schools that are, that are quite unprotected where this so is an issue? This bit we're here, 
So this bit is, so if you look just on the letter, that's Bell's Farm School. Okay. Um, so th there's this bit here, which is, uh, yeah, you got Bell's Farm there. Um, so you, yeah, you could make a case for that. And then I suppose further down, you've got the oaks on the right. Well then. I'd keep it. Yeah, that sounds good to me. The schools will make, the schools will be happy with that, I think, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So we'll keep that on the list. Um, and right. Yeah. So this was the footpath idea, um, which was kind of from one of these houses roughly to the pavement here, because um, there isn't really a, a, an easy walk across. Oh, Alan's going no. This is slightly surprising, but do explain. I just think that we've got a, a more pressing proposal for this particular corner of the world. Okay, and you think you think it'd be too much to have two proposals from pretty much the same spot? Yeah, I think I think this this process is is about um, trying to whittle it down, uh, and and that that probably could be one of the criteria for doing so. Okay. Any thoughts, Melissa? I mean, yeah, it's not sort of speaking out to me as something that needs to be done. It's just something that, like, would make getting out of houses slightly more convenient. So, I mean, I think if what Alan's saying is he does want to whittle it down and, like, make it more of a streamlined approach, then I would knock it off because it doesn't seem like a necessity. It seems more like a sort of, yeah nice little thing to have <laughs> so just also to um i think kind of explain it was partly like for like carers and stuff like that to be able to reach the door um you know it was it wasn't just oh i, I can't be bothered to walk all the way around it was you know like there's, there's people here who have kind of carers coming and all oh, there was you know, one time an ambulance came and you know they had to go all the, you know and all this sort of stuff so it was, it was that sort of conversation that i had and actually it was on the door it was when i was out door knocking actually that on this patch a few weeks a few weeks back that somebody raised it and kind of took it in and, and that was what they were saying so just to give it it wasn't completely like oh my amazon delivery you know got lot you know it was it was a little bit more than that is it the carers are the ones that are parking up right there Ooh. Ooh. oh dear um i think i think the other issue related to this is that the backtrack behind these houses is an absolute nightmare and nobody likes driving there. It's like one of these ones, it's a bit like we're, um, on Marshall Road, Minister, where you've got those backtracks where the garages are and these backtracks are unadopted. And so they're basically scrubby, sandy, muddy, pothole filled puddles. Um, and so nobody likes driving around the back of those um, so they're not council maintained. Um, and, and hence, consequently, these particular these houses in particular don't have any easy access to the road, you know, because that backtrack's awful. So that's also the other bit of context here as well. Is okay. it's probably, that's probably partly why Alan, this keeps happening in terms of the people parking in the field alone. I mean, after hearing what you've had to say, I would be more like, tempted to put it on. I think it probably should just be put on the list of options. I think. <laughs> I, well, I don't have a view either way on this. I, I like I, for me, this is in the balance. I'm just giving you the full context to allow you to to make a you know informed discussion on this. The danger is though that that's then going to reinforce the problem that we're trying to fix. That's you know a pathway from there to there is is actively encouraging then people to then park park up there and use that footpath. So it doubles down on a on a pre-existing problem. Okay. I don't feel I've got consensus on this. So I think I don't know. I can kind of yeah, I can see what Alan's saying. Any more thoughts, Melissa? Not really. I mean, I at the end of the day, like if we're getting like the ward to vote on it, then shouldn't we just 
let the ward vote on it and decide, like, rather than, like, a few of us there. I don't know. I mean, we won't, to be fair, only one of them will win, but yeah, that's a... But I would like as, as I would like this process to be as user friendly as possible and for as many people to vote as possible. So that's why it'd be nice to have a real manageable present a real manageable number and a footpath to a couple of houses leading to somewhere where no one should be parking anyway. Doesn't feel like that that should be part of the shortlist. You know, the, the other ones that we've been talking about had multiple beneficiaries I, I just i don't see it in in this one i see it being causing as much problems as, as it's solving okay i'm getting nods from melissa is that is that you're getting yeah, that no, i think i do agree with alan like i mean yeah i think so i don't think it needs to go on again it's probably something we can keep in the back of our minds for you know future ideas but i don't know yeah Okay. Um, all right. We'll we'll knock it off. Um, right. Uh, we're nearly there. Right. Linsworth Roads. Bit of road protection there outside. Anyway, yeah, well, it was one six one, but it, the road stretches from like I think one five nine or one six one to one six five. Yeah, I don't really have strong feelings about this. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's just, yeah, it'd be fine. I, I, what do you think, Alan? I, I think I'm in. I'm in the same boat. Um, have you seen this, Julian? Is is it is it a big big problem? I haven't actually looked at. Have had a chance to actually look at it and deal myself again. And I think, I th from memory, I think it was only one person who, who chucked it in. It wasn't one of the ones. It wasn't. This wasn't a poster, a Poston Croft one, um, or or a, or a Made for Avenue one. Um, and to be honest, it, like there's probably a lot, several patches in Lindsworth where this is a problem. If that makes sense, particularly if they've taken the trees out um, for whatever reason. There's been quite a few trees pulled out on the Lindsworth estate recently because Keir did their five yearly inspection and found a load of them, according to them, were diseased and therefore have, have been pulling them out. So, um, this, yeah, there's a few, there's quite a few patches like this that would, you know, you could make a case for. Um, I think we are we are putting forward two proposals that will benefit this particular estate, aren't we? Yeah. So that's is that enough? Yeah, Given I'm not really feeling it. Time? I think unless anyone has strong feelings about this idea, I think I'd be okay leaving it off. Okay. Uh, and the last one is again the Linsworth Estate, and it's Colleen Avenue again, Road Protection. I mean, I'm not, I don't mean to be facetious, but that looks, that looks in pretty good nick, really. Yeah, I mean, I don't know when it was taken in relation to when, Okay. you know, when the complaint was. Um, well, it's, it's August last year, according to Google Street View, so I mean, and, and the complaint was definitely this year. It's a recent one. Okay. Yeah, again, it's another one that I don't really have strong feelings in either direction about. So, yeah. Yeah. Nor me. Is this this multiple complainants? Did you, did you say or just one? I think this is just one. Okay. Well, then I I, I would be consistent with the, the, the previous discussion. Okay. All right. Well, well, I, I'm 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 reading that as as. 
uh, a no. Right, so that leaves then um, That leaves these one, two, three, um, four, five, six. Well, it is six, as so we're going to shove uh, the Osterode sign in. We're not and close, so that that would mean, yeah, six. We're, we've whittled it down to such short as to six projects. I think that's good. I think yep. six is sort of quite like easy to like go on. It's not like a. It's not a really long list. Like people will actually hopefully want to have their say. And we've covered quite a bit of geography there, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. so we've got, we've got, um, there's one in, yeah, in the kind of centre, prime Druid Teeth. There's one, obviously, Mead Fulch is just north of Druid Teeth. There's um, a couple in Linsworth Estate. There's one on the um, Money Hall Hall Road. There is, obviously, actually, there is one in, in the Money Hall Estate. Um, yeah, so the only bit we, yeah, that is, that does cover kind of most of the ward um, ish. There's nothing any, there's not an, nothing there on Broad Lane as such. Um, and there isn't, I suppose, anything at the far end on, on kind of Broad, Broad Meadow Lane, the far end of Money Hall Road. But yeah, otherwise, that's reasonable spread across the ward. And I do think one of those proposals would massively benefit. People like me off Broad Lane. Yeah, yeah, no, so, yeah, no. Actually, yeah, you, you're right. The Money Hall Hall Junction one, yeah, that would that would have a Broad Lane benefit as well. Okay, so that means that um, The list is as follows. Um, so that is the, the list as we've got it, um, based on that willing down. Uh, if um, so there's a couple of things to just um, uh, kind of tidy up, really. The digital speed warning sign, they're five grand each. So we can either just have it as a five grand standalone and maybe shove it in with the small projects, or we do two for 10 grand effectively with the money on, and, and, and put both of them on Bell's Lane, like one in each direction. Um, so so that's, that's that. Um, and then I'll have to kind of clarify costings a little bit, but the other option as well is we could, I could try and shove in the small projects in with the filter lane if, if, that'll, um, if that'll work, if, if the money will stretch. I'll have to have a conversation with my highways about that, um, which would then whittle down to five choices um, if I did that. Um, so, yeah, I suppose. Um, do we want to do two on on Bell's Lane, and do we? Um, and do you want me to try and see if I can bodge those small projects in with the, the Money Hall Filter Lane, Money Hall Road Filter Lane thing to try and try and kind of do have a bit of cake and eat it on that one. So. So, sorry to be awkward, but um, is it worth, in terms of Money Hall Road, offering bollards and or double yellow? Yeah, so if it's double yellow, it would blow the budget. It yeah. would only, we could only budget together if it was bollards. So that, again, I'm going to have to have that conversation with highways about 
the best solution. Because if they come back and say to me, no, we can only do a double yellow there, we can't do the bollards, it'll have to be double yellow, then I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't juggle the, the, the money. Yeah. So, it might, yeah, so obviously you need to check that out first. In terms of the two digital speed warnings, has, has anybody else missed out on this? Is there any cold spots? Um, in terms of hot spots for, for speeding, uh, the, the road I probably get most complaints about for, for speeding is probably Broadane. Um, uh, and, and, and after that, possibly Monohaw Hall Road. Um, uh, there is already one on Broad Lane, uh, the, uh, one of these signs. I think we've got two, Julian. Oh uh, yes, no, you're right. You've got one of the right. Yeah, yeah. So they, they do tend to come in twos, not not always. Okay, I'm just yeah, just wondering whether you could strategically position two of them uh, in different places to have more impact. But I, I doubt. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. So we, I mean, but yeah, I suppose, I suppose. I suppose we, we, we could decide to have two of them and locations can be confirmed, or we can decide to have one of them and do a load of other stuff. Um, so that's, I suppose, that's what I'm trying to flesh out here. So. Okay, well then, I am overcomplicating things. St stick to the one, you know, a site was identified. We, we all thought it was a good site. It was a legitimate site. It needs one. Stick to the one. Let, let's not, you know, start trying to spend five five grand that hasn't been asked for elsewhere. Mm. Yeah, I might again. I might just have again a conversation with highways and just seeing um, if there's any uh, benefit increase of having two versus one. Um, I might I might just look into that in terms of of, of you know each way and all the rest of it. Um, so yeah, and just and just double check them. Okay, so um, but if we yeah, in terms of the other question around if I can do if we if it's bollards and if we can, I can kind of swing that one money wise. We're okay merging those last two ideas if if um, if we can make the money work if it's not double yellows. Yeah, yeah. If okay. We have money left over from this year. Let's say we do only spend like the five thousand on the like the speed warning. Would we be then be able to carry that money over to next year and potentially do like a bigger project, or is it? No, uh, no. Um, so, so no. They, they've they've never given us carryover, which is a bit frustrating actually, because you know, like, if we'd be able to carry like two or three years over, like you're talking twenty, thirty grand, then at that point you can kind of do something quite. You might be able to do something quite creative. Um, but no, you can't. And the other problem with carryover next year is you're then going into not only you're going into another financial year you're also then going into um, another whole election cycle. Um, so that's the other, the other problem with that. They, the council actually hate things like that, where it, it kind of goes into, into, a, into another one. So yeah, that would be um, almost a no-no. I mean, I, 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 would, I would love, um, like generally outside, you know, when, when we're not in an election uh, run up, um, that we could, we could, maybe merge it or, or yeah like you say have a four-year budget that you play over four years um play with over four years but um so i know that's what um uh so i've got and, and i've got a green um green pie council i know on warwickshire county council obviously completely different you know to, to birmingham but they get a devolved highway budget for their for their for their for their ward but they get it a, they get about 30 grand per year and it's a, as a, it's a done as a four-year block for the length of their term, which means that you can you can spend it all in one year, like the 120 grand in one, or you can spread it out or do what you want. So you've got much more control then over what you what you do and how you do it, but we don't get that. Um, we get, you, this is what the, the amount of money you got for one year and you can only spend it on X, Y, and Z and do it in this way, unfortunately. Um, which, as I said, is, is a bit frustrating. Um, okay. Uh, so, I think there's anything else we need to um, okay on that. Um, 
yeah okay um so i think that's it for that unless there's any any questions no. No. Okay. Brilliant. So um, I will try and get some voting done on this uh, and uh, see if we can get um, a shortlist from a shortlist to a winner. Um, who knows? I, I, I mean, I, yeah, last year I thought Meadful Avenue was a shoe in, but uh, Bramwell Crescent came from nowhere and won it. So, um, you know, who knows how it'll pan out. Um, Okay, so that's it. And brilliant. Thanks, guys. That was really, really, really helpful. Um, really useful discussion. Um, I suppose, yeah, move on to the last agenda item, really, which is um, anything else um, people want to raise or discuss or talk about. Um, so I suppose over, over to, to, to you guys, if there is anything. Alan, go for it. So it, although this is highways related, it didn't feel right bringing it into the mix in the, the previous agenda item. It, it's just to reiterate my concerns. And I know that the figures that you've got available here aren't even close to being able to do anything about it. And it would have been nice if someone from Highways was, was here to discuss this. But yeah, the turning from Broad Lane to, to Ulster Road, um, just I think it was last week or maybe the week before, I saw another near miss somebody is going to get seriously hurt there one day i'm, I'm surprised it's a miracle it hasn't happened already uh, people panic they're in the, the box seat they've got a queue of cars behind them they're waiting five minutes and they and they go for it it's a hill start because of the shape of the the, the angle of the road people can turn left in third gear so they don't need to slow down and then people turning right onto broad lane quite often cut across you uh, and I've had a, a number of near misses uh, there. Now I'm I'm not a highway engineer, but I'm sure that someone that knows their onions could come up with something constructive to to improve that junction. Um, it's been a concern of mine ever since I moved here 11 years ago. So you know I I just wanted to keep bringing it up, and I, I totally appreciate that the challenges you've had, Julian, with, with addressing it, but. I just believe, you know, if you keep talking about these things, hopefully eventually something gets done before someone dies or or has a terrible injury. Yeah, no, and um, Alan, you're right. It is a right oh, prickly junction, that one. It, it, it's horrible. Um, I think there's a couple of things I'd, I'd say is, is sometimes residents' requests around that junction is less about safety and more about the congestion around that junction um and and so I, I i have actually looked into and i did ha, you know i had a whole um uh yeah it's you know lobbying of the council around it and trying to say could, could you get um you know hundred you know could you get a roundabout put in there or some lights or, or something like that and the response i got from highways and and you say you know, you're right it's a shame they're not they're not able to come tonight they were supposed to come but um the response i had and this was about two years ago. Um, was it's, it would cost 150 grand to like do a roundabout or a, or a lights or anything like that. Um, so that's basically that in terms of we don't have 150 grand in the world budget to spend on that. Um, you know, now the safety aspect, you're absolutely right. The, the thing I'd you know just flag on on the more congestion side, and you know. If residents want that and we did have the money, then then all right, we could let's make it happen. The only thing I would caution, and obviously, is if your main issue with that area is congestion um, at that end, making it easier to pull out and and turning it into a roundabout or a lights and making it easy to drive through, it's potentially going to actually incentivize people to use broad lane even more than they already are because it's suddenly it's easier to get out the bottom end. Um, now you say that might be a price worth paying because in the short term it'll make it easier and reduce the congestion, you know. But in the long term, it might mean you're just back to where you started because you've removed that pinch point. Um that that's a risk. I mean, I'm not saying it you know, depending on what, what you designed and depending on what what the scheme was, you know, there, there'll be ways of maybe doing it so that didn't happen. Um uh, but but yeah, so that that would be the only thing to kind of just just watch and be careful about. Um, as I said, it you know. 
you know, residents want something done without a junction. It is, and it is a really, really difficult junction. So, you know, it is something I've pushed and I'm, you know, I'll keep trying to push it. But the, the, you know, last I had on that was 150,000 price tag about two years ago. And we you know, just, just no money for it. Um, I think, I think, yeah, but I mean, whether you're going to argue about the congestion or, or not, what you can't argue about is the safety aspect, like you said, Alan, in terms of, 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 of pulling out and, and all the rest of it. Um, and also like cars park on those big wide pavements near the post box as well, um, which is which adds to all that. Um, you know, and I've raised that with the police so many times about those cars there to try to, you know, can you get that person to move that car? It's just, it's just, you know, it's not adding, it's not helping that, that junction. So that's kind of where we are with that junction. Um, is yeah, there has been kind of um the like council said it, it's got that price tag. Um you know, it's something I'm yeah more than happy to keep keep flagging, keep raising, and so yeah, you know, Alan, keep keep flagging, raising it with me, and keep pushing it, um, and and uh, as oh. well. And, and you know, we'll see. What we got. I, I wonder whether there is any other other solutions that would be lower cost that, that might at least you know mitigate some of the safety issues. Yeah. No. So I think what I need to do is an action for me really is to help you. Um, so we've got a bit of a street WhatsApp group since the the pandemic. So if we if we collectively um, galvanise ourselves and 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 start lobbying, then that supports you rather than leaving it all up to you. So so yeah, leave leave that with me. But yeah, I do think that there's potentially a lower cost um, solution that might just you know make the difference between someone having a serious accident and and them not. Yeah, if we can if we can find that and we can put it to the council, then then great. And that'd be brilliant. Um, you know, I'm, I'm all ears. I'm more than happy to, to give that a go. Um, yeah, because as you say, it, it's it. You know, that safety is just it is it is a nightmare junction. Um, anything else? Anybody wanted to to raise? I'm, I'm seeing no's. Okay. Um, just to flag, just because you know, I'm sure you've not had enough. Um, of making decisions about money. Um, uh, I think and Kay might be able to fill us in a bit more where we are with this, but each ward is getting um, 17 and a half thousand um, to spend on community projects for, uh, relating to the Commonwealth Games. Um, so a future ward meeting will be doing a similar thing to this tonight um, about that. Uh, yeah, we've had the first round of applications uh, for that funding. So the, the applications are going to submit centrally and um, then kind of council centrally kind of vets them and checks them. And then they're kind of, you know, discussed and, you know, a bit like we've done tonight with the highest budget, you know, an award meeting looked up by residents and picked by residents. Um, so my understanding is with round one, those applications are getting to the point where they'll probably be brought to a ward meeting. Um, but obviously well, there'll be round two as well. Now, I don't think there's been lots of applications for round one. So I think for round two, when that comes in near summer, autumn, it would probably be good to do a real, as a community, real another push to try and get more in. So we've, we've got, you know, more people applying for it and, and more of a kind of discussion to be had. Um, yeah, so I suppose, yeah, Kay, is, is there anything else I've missed there? And yeah, where where are we with with of round one coming to the award meeting? I don't think so. I think you've covered that in a nutshell. Um, yeah, any applications that have been received um, for your award, there are um, organisations that are helping set up these ward meetings so that um, they're totally impartial. I can't remember who the organisation is that, do you come under Hall Green? Sally Oak. Actually, it is the team that I work for. It's not me personally, but um, so there will be some help and support to set them up. There'll be somebody will be in touch with you to organise a date um, and then they'll take it from there. And uh, depending on how, how they're doing, I think there was some talk about doing some sort of like electronic voting, but I'm not sure whether the technology has caught up in time to do that for this round. Um, but yeah, that, that will be happy. Those meetings will be organised for sort of September, October time, I understand but somebody will be getting in touch with some more information. Alan? Um, 
guys, I'm sorry to sound like a know-all, but this is actually my, my sort of sphere of work. So this is the one, one, one of the few things I know anything about. Um, I have concerns with that fund about middle-class arts organisations parachuting into communities where they've had no previous presence, taking the money, doing something that goes over the heads of most of the residents and then doing one again, never to be seen again. I, I happen to know of, of arts organisations that, that are targeting multiple areas. It would be really, really good in our area if, if this fund helps develop grassroots activities from local residents. So I will, I will find the time on a voluntary basis, even though I have such little time, but I will find the time um, to, to help any group that needs any help putting forward an application uh, for our, our area. I would, it would be time well spent to block out pretentiousness um, uh, and opportunists so I think I think for round two, I think that would be that would be you know great. I mean, if I so I think for round what what we could say is if for round two I get wind of anybody interested in petting applications who are local to the area, I could put them in touch with you, Alan, if you'd be wanting to, to work with them and help them. Uh, there are two organisations as well that are offering support to people who want to put in applications. If if it's a, a group that's not used to putting in applications, and that's Birmingham Community Matters and locality so they're the two partner organizations that are working to help support local people with their applications so um if you wanted that i can't don't know off the top of my head they're up but their email addresses but yeah. i can certainly send those to you i know both these organizations sorry right. I'm, I'm not i'm not being difficult it's, I, i'll 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 give them more help than those two organizations are able to give but yeah they can link in yeah, I'll encourage them to link in with them. Um, brilliant, thanks. Um, so, okay, so yeah, look out for that. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's pretty much everything for tonight. So um, I'll, when I have a moment, we'll we'll kind of take that to the next stage of of residents voting on that shortlist, and then we'll we'll then get out of those projects put in. Um, and thanks to you all for this tonight and um, that was a very useful discussion um and yeah look out for the, the next ward meeting um it'll either be probably on the commonwealth games or, or we might have one in between on on another issue in the meantime as well um so yeah thanks a lot and um i'll see you all again soon thank bye. you thank you bye bye and good night bye.